Your tongue is dumb. It can easily be tricked into thinking that a cherry flavored drink is actually lime or orange, that a vanilla flavored custard is chocolate flavored, or that a white wine is red wine. Not just that, but it can be tricked into thinking that a cheap wine is actually like a fancy expensive wine, or that a cake is more chocolatey and more rich than actually what is in there or that a beer is more exciting than what it really is. These, I know about the cheap wine and expensive wine thing, but all of these sound outlandish, Naveen. Right. I, I know the difference between a cherry flavor and a lime flavor. No, you know the difference between a cherry flavored drink that looks red and orange flavored drinks that looks orange, okay? Okay. Color affects your taste perception. Okay. This much? This much, yeah. So there is research showing that identical cherry flavored drinks, huh? but food coloring was used so that one looked like regular red cherry flavored, another looked yellow like lime, and one looked orange, right? And people thought they were three different drinks, cherry, lime, and orange. Was, okay. the, fla uh, was the coloring adding the flavor? No, not at all. They were identical taste. The flavor was being added by your brain because you do not expect an orange color drink to have a cherry flavor. You expect it to have an orange flavor. Okay. It is called the predictive coding theory of the brain. The brain looks at all kinds of cues, decides what it is looking at or what it is tasting. And then in most cases, it just confirms it using confirmation bias. Okay. A red drink. Mm -hmm was rated as more strawberry flavoring, stronger strawberry flavor than a similar colorless drink, although the taste was exactly identical. Okay. This is going against the predictive coding theory of my brain. My brain is unable to predict what he's about to say next, yeah. but it makes sense nonetheless. Right. Take wine, right? Red wine and white wine are supposed to be so different and mm. yet when researchers added red color to white wine and then asked people to describe the wine, hmm. they described it in the same uh, adjectives that are typically used for red wine. Okay. <sighs> Listen, I don't understand wines all that much. I am yeah. uh, not a wine connoisseur, but uh, I could possibly get confused between lime and orange. Hmm. Cherry and orange are really distinct flavors, Naveen. I am not talking about very strong flavors, okay? Light flavors. It makes that much of a difference, not like completely from here to there. See, color affects much more than just flavor. It affects how much we eat. What? For example, participants in a study, huh? some of them were given just one color of yogurt hmm. and others were given yogurt in three different colors. Taste was identical, but because it was three different colors, people ate more. Okay. Because they wanted to taste all the flavors right, in all the colors. No, but it's not just that. Our brain works differently, right? You take M&M's. Huh. Okay. People were told to pour a certain quantity of M&M's into a bowl. Huh. Some people were given just M&M's of just one color huh. and others were given many different colors. Huh. The people in the second group poured 12% more than the people in the first group. Because they couldn't figure out because the, there were assorted colors and... No, just our brain works differently, right? One color is boring. You don't want too much of a boring thing. Multiple colors is exciting and you want more of exciting things, right? Okay. That's why Smarties huh. intentionally come in many different colors, although they taste the same because people eat more of those. Okay. Okay. I don't know what Smarties are, but they are very smarty. The makers, yeah. I mean. Right. Now, food coloring is used in restaurants quite a lot because they want to manipulate you, okay? okay. There are companies which sell food coloring to restaurants huh. and they have a catalog of 70 different colors. 70? Okay. Yes. To make your food look yummier. Okay. Not just that, but you eat less but feel more full because of the food color. Okay, that's just taking it a little too far. Just because of food color, I can't... I will explain, right? Because if something has a rich red color, huh. your brain assumes that it will be full of fat and protein and stuff like that, right? So it is anticipating a heavy meal. So even though you 
it's something it feels more full okay this is taking so, us back to the savanna right absolutely right all our brains mechanisms have evolved for the savannas and modern marketers are hacking those so that they give you less food but you feel oh this has good portion sizes right i feel full at the end of it okay <laughs> of course ajinomoto is also used for that uh, baking soda is used for that but okay. uh, yeah so restaurants also manipulate you using color okay i thought i knew that restaurants paint the colors of their walls a certain color because it makes you feel slightly oh, there's a less whole hung. bunch of other things they do right other than just the color of the food uh -huh. there are other colors that also matter example mousse right chocolate mousse yeah under warmer color lights like orange ish reddish colors yeah that mousse was rated as richer and more chocolatey than under white light and bluish lights similarly red ambient light makes a red wine seem richer and more fancy and fruitier than if it was just served in regular light it okay. also makes the red wine look more red <laughs> yeah. so all of that yeah. also but also huh. desserts served on a white plate are rated as richer and tastier compared to dessert served on a black plate this this is so evil man this yeah. is so evil by the restaurant no 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 there are good uses of this okay. okay dementia patients getting them to eat is like one of the difficult problems right yeah but yeah. research shows that if you give them in like multicolored plates they eat more i didn't know this and this is right. very interesting to know but so you can your brain can be hacked in good ways also right <laughs> thank you for that little sliver of sunshine yeah. being within those very dark clouds but yeah. uh, i guess is also mesh what i was basically trying to come at earlier was it meshes well with color theory where yeah. blue makes you feel less hungry red mm. makes you feel more hungry and uh, yeah. you know more uh, ravenous which is yeah. why certain restaurants choose red color palettes whereas restaurants that are giving you healthy food choose bluer or greener color palettes exactly. and yeah. stuff like that right. right but it's not just color okay okay smell affects taste okay in fact most people don't know that 80 90% of taste is actually smell as soon as you put food in your mouth or even take it close to your mouth there are particles that go in your nose yeah and that smell is what is creating the concept of taste in your head okay and this can be easily figured out by if you keep your nose closed these are called plugged nose experiments right you huh. put a little clip on your nose huh. and then you can't tell the difference between cinnamon and cumin and paprika they all taste similar right you can't tell the difference between red wine and white wine right the whole thing about red wine is those complex flavors are actually complex smells in your nose right wow a jelly bean you can't tell the difference between the different flavors but as soon as you open your nose you can tell oh this is that one right so airplane food sucks remember how jerry seinfeld said what's the deal with airplane food what's the deal with airplane food i will tell you what's the deal with airplane food tell okay. me in an airplane the air is fully controlled it is dry yes. okay as a result there is not enough moisture in your nose as a result your sense of smell is a little lower than normal and as a result a lot of your taste has disappeared because it was coming from your sense of smell right? so airplane food tastes bland because of the dryness in the air which is kept at a certain pressurized level absolutely so yes. the chefs are actually making it taste good but we can't taste the actual taste because we can't smell it wow Mr Seinfeld you better send a note of thanks to Naveen for this yeah another research was interesting right they gave tasteless jelly yeah. you know to jello thing yeah to people except that somewhere near there huh. they had put in one case strawberry smell huh. okay like like a ha huh. yeah and in another one was apple scent okay and these guys claimed it was strawberry jelly and these guys claimed it was apple jelly just that because it taste was the same what went inside the mouth was the same what went inside the nose was different exactly. and so i wish medicine manufacturers understood this somebody please clip this little portion and send it to all the pharma companies and tell them even if your medicine tastes disgusting and bland or whatever if you can make it smell good it will at least go down well especially with kids wish our childhood medicine manufacturers knew that 
so we did color effects uh, taste we did smell effects taste there is more there is of course more you can you know you there is always go, more go to all senses right temperature effects taste kind of makes sense because i like eating hot food more than everybody eating cold food everybody knows this right yes. temperature affects food some things taste good hot some things taste good cold they just do can you guess why no actually i Very never thought about simple, it simple right at a higher temperature there is more evaporation and as a result there is more odors and flavors going into your nose mm. uh, right also because of that the effect is less for liquids right yeah because as soon as you put it in your mouth they very quickly reach body temperature they are all roughly at the same temperature but for solids the hotter it is the more flavors go into your nose that's why hot food hot rotis hot chawal will taste very different from cold ones hot pizzas taste better than cold pizzas but cold ice cream tastes better than hot ice cream then yes so there is one more effect going on okay, okay? the receptors taste receptors on our tongue ha huh? they have different sensitivities at different temperatures oh. okay so the sweet uh, receptors they work better at slightly higher temperatures so ice cream if you see if it has just come out of the freezer it doesn't taste as good but as it slowly starts to melt it tastes nicer and sweeter but bitter is the opposite okay bitter receptors are more sensitive at lower temperatures which is why coffee tastes good when it is hot but and that same one at a lower temperature tastes quite bitter, bitter. Okay. Yeah. by the way i'm talking about american americano coffee right indian coffee is mostly milk and sugar so <laughs> that has different things okay a lot of south indians are going to be really really yeah. angry no, no, no. with you no no south indians no they will not drink cold filter coffee okay whereas <laughs> all you people you are drinking cold coffee uh, all the time right that's a different thing that's not coffee. navin you slowly went from geriatric millennial to almost boomer okay <laughs> don't go there <laughs> okay let's go back to our focus okay. all right we have we have had the color we have had smell we have had temperature well sound also affects taste S- sound is this like some synesthesia thing what does no. sound have to do with taste when you are eating a potato chip uh-huh. okay if it makes a crunchy sound it tastes fresher to you because okay. crunchy is fresher no they did research on this they gave an old chip but they also added a crunchy sound just when they were biting in the background in the background and people felt this was a fresh nice chip who oh. are these researchers and who are giving them stacks of pringles to test what is this research oh you will not believe the creativity of these researchers okay what they gave subjects ha huh. an ice cream which was flavored bacon and egg ice cream okay <laughs> then on the speakers in the restaurant in the background ha huh. when they played the sound of bacon sizzling mm mm-hmm. people felt that the bacon flavor was stronger in the ice cream <laughs> but for the same ice cream huh. when they played the sounds of chickens clucking <laughs> people felt this has more of an egg flavor okay kon hai ye log no kahan se aate hain ye i'll tell you the real reason they do this research okay okay the research shows that if you play music hmm. that a person likes beer tastes more bubbly more interesting than if the music playing is not what they like ah sound okay. affects taste right now it starts to make sense now it makes sense why restaurants play a certain kind of music and why you prefer restaurants that play a certain kind of music exactly because the food tastes better there because the music is better there yeah. or better according right. to you but the easiest simplest way hmm. to affect taste has nothing to do with our senses, senses. Huh. the easiest most important one is price affects taste is this the cheap red wine expensive red wine research absolutely this is the Please. famous wine price study right go for it the same wine when it was poured out of a cheap bottle was rated as like okay this is okay whereas if it was poured out of a bottle of a very expensive wine it tasted so much better 
to the participants right similarly chocolates Haan. which are priced at luxury levels taste more rich and nicer to people than the same chocolate given away for free or like you know cheap but listen belgian pralines are actually they are good yaar well you don't want to know what goes into belgian chocolate okay there's an entire field of study there where you are being conned okay but let's not go there i will make him do an episode on it don't worry i yes. will remember this yes. belgian chocolate episode sixth way ha huh. is stress affects taste stress yes we have done an episode on how stress affects everything in your life and how stress affects your heart yeah. obviously stress affects your taste also i i remember us talking about stress affecting the internal systems of the body but taste in that episode we talked about how when you are stressed your body stops doing anything that it thinks is not important yeah saliva production is one of those Ooh. so now if you are producing less saliva tastes in your mouth everything is blander yeah right which is why if you are relaxed you eat better and food tastes better whereas when you are stressed everything is like Ugh. yeah and you end up also eating lesser because saliva production because stress because a lot of things correct yeah so if you want to truly enjoy your food relax yes because the other reason why things taste worse when you are stressed is because your brain is focused on other things yeah and we said that a lot of taste is in your brain if your brain is not thinking about the taste then it doesn't taste and clearly the brain is not really thinking about taste a lot of the time <laughs> as is proven there is color there is smell there is temperature there is sound there is price and then there is stress all of these affecting your taste buds they are not your buds clearly they are your enemies okay <laughs> they are not enemies but you know what i mean fascinating little insight into well, how our brain works don't diss the brain okay all of this works extremely well when you are eating natural food under natural conditions right okay. the brain is taking correct decisions about what are the things you need what are the things you should be eating what are the things you should be enjoying okay mm -hmm. it's only when modern marketing gets involved and then tries to hack these systems yeah to sell you more stuff that's when a problem is caused right yeah that's why michael pollan says about food mm. eat food which your great grandmother would recognize as food so if it came from a factory if it came in a packaging especially if the packaging said healthy try to avoid that because your taste is being manipulated and you are being made to crave food that yeah. makes them money that is definitely true and uh, that's not the only misconception we have about food by the way we did an entire episode on uh, food related misconceptions that you should definitely be aware of this is just taste but there is an entire thing about food and uh, stuff that you don't know about food that you should probably check out next meanwhile uh, i will go and figure out uh, how to enjoy certain things using this new found knowledge about manipulating my taste navin shrikant future iq